This excerpt was taken from a Bull and Bloom interview with John Karabi. To listen to more from this interview, click the links in the description. There's still a ton more to go. If you'd like to be notified as more from this interview is uploaded, hit the subscribe button and click the bell. Hooligans Holiday, how did that song come together? You know, to be honest with you, like, I, I know at one point <clears throat> we had this the idea really was kind of a cross between um it was it's weird how the song ended up because the initial idea was very much in line with like say a cross between live wire and um maybe highway star or that ian gillen solo song running white face city boy or I think it was called City Boy. Run in, white things, city boy. And so it was really up-tempo, double time. <laughs> so we started working on it. And uh, and then it was weird. It was right around the time all the riots were starting to happen in L.A. And the newscaster in L.A., was showing videos of all these fires burning all throughout Los Angeles. And he said, it's a regular hooligans holiday out there. And so I just wrote it down and I just thought the title was great. So I showed it to Nikki and he's like, oh yeah, that's badass. So we started working on the song and we took it up. We, we had it just like a really rough version of it. And we played it for Bob and Bob tore it apart. And then we were doing this and we really just deconstructed and then reconstructed that song to a halftime beat. Um, and just all the little things that you hear. And then Nikki and I just went and wrote lyrics to that title. I always felt like, even when I heard it the first time, and I was totally into bands like Soundgarden. I mean, I loved the progression into grunge, but I remember when I heard that, I was like, God damn, that song would have been a monster hit if it had been released earlier, in 90 or early 91. This is why my thinking is... Uh, the way it is. So I just basically sit there and I say that I can only control the things that I can control. Like when we were doing that record, I mean, there was things being tossed around like, this is the best record you guys have ever done. Somebody was like, oh man, this is going to sell more copies than the Black record by Metallica. And uh, we're going to spend a million dollars on the whole, uh, on the Misunderstood video, like Michael Jackson did. And I'm just sitting there. And, and again, you know, it kind of feeds into your thing and you start having expectations of what the record should do. And after that whole thing played out the way it played out, like some people look at, they, they say, uh, well, why are you being so pessimistic about this or pessimistic about, I go, I'm not pessimistic. I'm really optimistic. I'm just being pessimistically realistic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's realism. Like all I can do is write the best song I can, do the best vocal performance, play the best guitar I can, get the best mix, the best master, and hand this to somebody and pray that they do their job. After they do their job, I have to pray that, because contrary to what anybody says, there is a massive amount of luck involved. And I then you have to sit and pray that all the stars line up the way they're supposed to, and the song becomes a hit, and everybody embraces it and it gets on all the radio stations and MTV. You know what I mean? So I just sit there uh, and I just go, eh, you know what? I, I've done the best that I can do. And I just keep my fingers crossed and pray that everybody else does their job. I mean, it was you know 94. I mean? I mean, by that point, only the thrash bands and really only a couple, Megadeth and Metallica, even Slayer took a hit and um, fell in popularity for a while. So really, it was just those two. And when you look at gold records, nobody was having a gold record from the 80s era other than Poison, I think, had one, Queensryche. There were just like a few that had uh, even gold records at that point. So it was really... And that's, that's the thing that 
one of the things that goaded me a little bit was the dirt, the movie. And I was like, I really just personally wish they would have left me out of the movie completely because somebody, somebody's genius vision decided to make it look like John Karabi joined the band and the band was so bad that they were playing high school gymnasiums for eight people. And that wasn't the case. Right. I mean, if you go back and look at those scenes again, they really made it look bleak. Love it or hate it, we we had a fucking gold record. It wasn't feel good numbers, but it was a gold record. In ninety four, I mean, it, it, that's it, that's remarkable. It's actually a remarkable feat because I, I remember when it came out, I was like, holy shit, we're like not the beginning phase of Nirvana. We're like full fucking on into grunge. Everything was taking a major hit. Yes, Motley Crue. Motley Crue was swimming upstream with a cinder block wetsuit. It was. It was what it was. The other thing is, you know, a lot of people were, you know, and we knew it. I mean, the tour was a disaster in the grand scheme of Motley Crue. It looks like you were still playing to thousands of people. Yes. And if you go back and look at the pole star numbers, uh, I remember showing it to the guys going, how, like back, we were at rehearsal one day and somebody gave me a pole star. And I think we were the eighth, eighth largest grossing tour of 94. And I just sat there and I go, how the fuck is that possible? Like we were looking at it like, oh my God, it was, it sucked. And, and yeah, it was, it was brutal. It was hard, but we were still, it still wasn't as bad as they portrayed it in the movie. And that, that pissed me off a little bit, but it was what it was, man. You know, like I can't change that. I can't change the fact that the music industry was changing. I can't change the fact that everybody at Electra got fired five weeks after our record came out. I can't change the fact that it just, there were so many things lined up against us at that time. And I could sit here and give myself a stomach ache over it, but it's like, you know what? It is what it is. It was a great time. It's a great record. Next. Do you have the gold record hanging in your house? Nope. Uh, it's in my storage locker. I, You know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm a weirdo. I've got some stuff from The Scream where it's like we were like the heat seeker band of the month. or And it's just all wrapped in bubble wrap and it's sitting in a storage locker with some guitars and amps that I have. Um, I have zero. I think in my entire house, the only music related picture I have is a giant photo that I had done on a canvas. It comes in four pieces, and it's a giant canvas of Led Zeppelin over my bar. That's it. There's no awards. There's no... It's just, I'm saving them. Maybe someday I'll give them to my grandkids or whatever. But I kind of look at things... I know this sounds weird, maybe cliche, but it's like um, Tom Brady just said it. He did an interview... And he was talking about you win the Super Bowl and it's awesome and you have that ring and you can go back and look at that ring and it reminds you of everything that you struggled for and worked for and uh, sacrificed to get that ring. But at the end of the day, next Sunday when football starts, new season, that ring means nothing this season. So um, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Like, this is a new world for me. I'm putting out new music that I'm proud of. I think that I'm growing uh, as a songwriter. And now Cassie Bell is out, and I'm looking forward to doing the press, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping everybody embraces it. But I'm already looking forward to the next song. I'm leaving here today. I've got one more interview to do. I got to stop by the bank and I'm going into the studio to start drums on the next song that I'm putting out. I can't sit here and rest on what Cassie Bella may or may not do. And I'm not sure shit, not going to sit here and rest on a record I did. Uh, well, I got three more years. It'll be 30 years that the Motley record came out. 2024 will be 30th anniversary, and I'm I'm like, oh shit, I did a record in '94. Yeah, but the mo whatever. I don't even think about it. It's that's gone. It's put to bed. Done. Don't 